Hi everyone, I'm Ben Shorrock and I am delighted that today I'm joined by my colleague Scott who's going to be talking to us about employer branding and the importance of employer branding. Um, I imagine lots of you will already know what branding is um, but employer branding, something that's a little bit different, is really something about how you can help solve one of the biggest problems lots of businesses have, which is how you can access the right talent at the right time and engage with them in the right way. Um, so Scott here has, has lots of exciting things to tell us about that today. Um, but I'm going to kick off by asking you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Why, why do you know about employer branding, Scott? No problem. Thanks, Ben. Um, so yeah, my name's Scott Murphy. Uh, I'm managing director for a company called HD Talent. Um, so essentially, we uh, work in the startup scale-up space uh, for recruitment. In I would say nationally, but geographically, you know, we sort of harness our, I would say, our experience on the southwest. A um, little bit or a snippet about myself. Uh, probably done 10, 12 years in uh, tech recruitment. I was making. Over the last about 19 dog years, but um, <laughs> yeah, my, my experience has varied really. So, obviously, I said that we, we're specializing with startups and scale ups at the moment, but uh, worked with some really big commercial entities, um, especially within the fintech space. Um, so, yeah, I would say um, I've experienced recruitment at, at sort of both ends of, of the scale. Um, so, in terms of building out you know, huge contract teams and, and trying to do strategic recruitment around projects from you know, finding that first very senior hire for, for a company and then to build on the back of that. So, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been interesting. It's been fun. Yes. Awesome. So, that's really helpful just to have a little bit of an understanding about your background. So, let's kick off. Tell us the basics. What is an employer brand? <laughs> I, so I would say, you know, it could be a number of things. If you're talking about marketing and, and growth strategy, you know, it's probably something totally different. But for, in the sense of recruitment, um, I would say it's essentially the process of of promoting your company. Um, so, you know, we're in a very competitive era, not just within the tech space, but obviously this conversation is going to focus on, on that specific area. Um, but I would say the main things that you're looking for within um, employer branding would essentially be, you know, something that reflects your values, your culture. Um, it could be anything from you know, benefits or salary or perks. But I think in this day and age as well, it's much more about, you know, your reputation. Um, also, I'll talk quite a little bit about, you know, finding the people behind the business, the people behind the leader, essentially, as well. So it's wrapping all of that into your employer brand, which will promote your company uh, to a stage that, you know, you, you're going to find off, fight off the competition, essentially. So it sounds like it's something that all businesses have to do now, and it's, it's probably a little more complex than it was. Five, ten, fifteen years. Yeah, ago. If, if I go back to the start of my recruitment uh, career, you know, it was very standard just to put an advert on. Uh, you know, have a black and white spec. Um, you know, you might expect some potential candidates to do a little bit of research about about your company, um, but it was often you know sort of salary that came into it, and you know the highest price or the highest bid of one. Um, I think we're in a you know, we're in a time now, especially sort of post-pandemic, where um, within the tech market, we're going to go in and talk about, you know, skill shortages and how to, I guess, pitch your company at the right level. But you are really, you know, just by engaging with candidates, that's only the start of the process. Um, you have to make sure that, you know, everything is aligned from, you know, even from the social uh, the social aspects of, of your company or how you're advertising that that has to be aligned with perks, benefits, salaries uh, or compensation uh, and then you know a huge one at the moment is about purpose, work-life balance um, so it's wrapping all of that into employer brand essentially so it sort of tells your own message uh, when you're, you're going out and sort of I guess engaging with those candidates even from the first the first point of contact Cool. Sounds easy. Sounds easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, touching on talent, is the talent out there? Is how how do you find out whether the talent's out there, and, and what sort of tools can uh, businesses and founders 
are used to go and find that talent? Um, so obviously when we were sort of having a chat uh, pre-recording this, um, I have written down the word absolutely. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't have a you know an agency or, or a company within tech recruitment if I if I didn't truly believe that. And you know it's like any sector when you're recruiting, the talent's always there. Um, it just depends how much talent. And I think what we've experienced, especially since 2016, is the immediate growth of the tech uh, tech industry within the UK. I think the, the, some sort of figures that I've, I've been looking at or been given recently suggested that it's increased by between 70,000 to 100,000 70, jobs, um, making it to, I think it's 2 million uh, vacancies or 2 million jobs within that area now, making wow. it more than any sort of manual uh, sector or any, any, any other sector out there. So... The increase in demand has had a big impact on what was already available. Now, I would say what I'm seeing in terms of dealing with education, universities, um, there's been a much, I guess, an overdue need to uphaul um, studies. So even from something standards, GCSE, IT, and making it applicable to what the real world needs, um, making sure that undergrad, postgrad um, courses relate to the working world out there. Um, you know, I think we, especially around the sort of 2015, 2016 time, we saw a lot of candidates come in into the tech sector uh, with computer science degrees, which were outdated just in the short time that they'd been studying for those courses. The, in terms of actual coding, the, the, the technology had, technologies have advanced already. Um, so there are things that, that have been put in place, which is creating that next generation of um, you know, tech professionals, tech skill sets which are needed. But that doesn't get away from the problem of what have we got, what's available already, which, you know, there is a shortage for that. But what I think needs to happen essentially is a combination of strong employer branding uh, and a strong message or a, str- a strong mission statement. But it whole also has to be uh, a way for, for business leaders to work collaboratively within networks, but almost think outside the box in terms of their hiring strategies. So not just, you know, finding you know, whether it's a video ad or a you know, physical advert, not just relying on that. As I mentioned to, to you earlier, Ben, you know, it's there's a big onus now on uh, business leaders to, you know, start incorporating new ideas of what their hiring strategy may be. So if that's upskilling internal people or if it's maybe, you know, you need a developer, this is just a, a roundabout an example, you know, if you need a senior developer to come in, you know, making sure that they're adding value. So rather than thinking only three developers, getting somebody in at a senior level who can then coach and build from within. Uh, and there's so many different values that, that that can add as well. Cool. And I guess in terms of of finding those people, is it the same as it always been? Is it is it understanding and looking at jobs boards? It's working with agencies. I guess what you're saying as well is some of that is about engaging with universities and boot camps and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So the range of methods that we tend to use at the moment, so we're quite focused on being more of a proactive uh, recruitment agency. So I guess the value for us or, or how we how we sort of sell our value to our clients is that we own purposely built talent pools. So rather than, you know, more, I guess, archaic ways of recruiting where uh, X client comes to us and says, we need this person, then you advertise and then you go to market. We're trying to make sure that we've got a readily available talent pool. And there are a number of agencies, you know, not just within Bristol, but around the UK that perform in that way. Good thing about that is, you know, you're tapping into somebody's network. So rather than just working with recruiters for their skill sets, i.e., you know, to scan CVs, to qualify candidates to the nth degree, you're tapping into the trust and their network. So usually, you know, those candidates are coming from a place where they've been referred or, that you know, somebody that's worked for them in the past has made a referral um, or recommended as well. So there's huge value in, in 
working with you know a number of recruiters but what, what I would say then is you've got to make sure that you're working with recruiters that you know aren't just advertising I think internal uh, advertisements for a company so if I was a client I would look at maybe trying to enter the market with you know some some forward thinking advertisements whether that's video uh, whether it's uh, you know spending some money within marketing or your SEO to try and advertise your company, there's a lot of I think there's a lot of value in that. As uh, externally as an agency, you know any adverts that we put through usually is very low response and uh, it's not very applicable to the the type of role that that's being advertised. Um, we're trying to use automation, um, which is you know, quite a modern technique. Um, but then it's about keeping the balance between the human touch and automation. So, uh, and that that's like sending out messages or emails. Or yeah, blah, blah, yeah, blah, you know, necessarily you. exactly. And you, you know, it's all around. I think 2022 is the age of finding the hidden candidate. So, you know, everybody who's I would say reputable who is going to add value to your company is probably in a good position already, especially within the tech sector. So what we try and do is track those you know it would be like marketing for example you know you're looking at buyer behavior so it's trying to track those hidden hidden candidates on whether it's socials uh, social media platforms whether it's linkedin um and trying to engage with them and you know it's almost trying to market your brand in front of them or you know the types of skill sets you're potentially looking for so there are different ways that you can use automation and you know you can almost use like seo or marketing to, to come up recruitment from a different angle um i would say networking huge uh, at the moment so we're very lucky uh, in bristol in the southwest to be part of the you know the the, the tech ecosystem um where it's you know you, you meet people uh, who can make introductions for you so if i was a startup coming to the area i would look to you know take advantage of the likes of tech spark uh set squares um just to make sure that you're you know you put within those right circles um because i think if you're going into a you know a new city or a new area and then you you, know, you stop advertising or recruiting you're almost at the bottom of the pile and once you get at the top of the pile do you know if it's the right pile <laughs> um so yeah it, i would say networking is huge and recently we've had the uh, bristol tech festival and i think that was a great advert for businesses new businesses come into the city where they're just tapping in into you know the right sorts of people and you know i, I think the especially within this day and age and you know you need you need those potential candidates to add value to the business a lot of that is built on trust and you know in terms of recommendations and friends and family i don't think you can get better than that especially yeah. within this you know the tech sector right across the uk cool and I, so it sounds like there's a range of things there that people should be doing some of them are about better implementing tools like automation and marketing and making sure you portray yourself right. Some of that is about um, tapping into networks and using networks in the right yeah. way. And some of that might be in local communities. Some of that inevitably for some roles uh, should be with agencies. Yeah. Um, so once you've sort of set up that structure, I guess a big part of understanding um, employer brand is trying to understand, you know, you have something to market, but you're also trying to understand what that customer, in this case the talent, really wants. Yeah, absolutely. So what sort of things have you been seeing as key drivers for people? Has it all been money or... Or other different things that that drive talent Do you to know different what? places. It, it, cha it changes, yeah, and you know we, and I, you know, I often say to you know when speaking to close clients, and you know, sometimes if they're they're a recruitment partner, uh, we will offer sort of strategy insight. You know, the recruitment industry within the UK is worth thirty three billion pound, and even from the guys that I've working with me and. Um, you know, training people into recruitment. You know, I always put the onus on that it's a service, and that's what you should do when 
sort of engaging with recruitment businesses is, is to treat it as that service. You know, the, the interface between you and the candidate. We speak to clients every day. We speak to candidates every day. So hopefully, in that amount of hours, there should be some knowledge about You've got some insights about, about, about what's going on. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, just relaying that back to the question that you asked about, you know, what what are candidates looking for? So we, we call it employee, uh, I think it's employee value proposition. Um, and the five main areas that I would sort of encompass or encircle within that are salary, um, work-life balance, which yeah, I can go into a little bit more yeah. in depth uh, just after this. Um, stability, location, and then I would say there's a sort of newer one emerging, which is around sort of responsibility and respect as well. Um, so post-pandemic, we saw a huge influx of candidates that were looking for London-based salaries, mm-hmm. which you always tend to have a premium because of the cost of living. not necessarily being based in London. But not being based in <laughs> London. So there was a huge focus on um, working from home, the benefits that came from that. We're starting to see a bit of a pushback on that now. So starting to sway uh, the, the other way, especially with startups and scale-ups. Um, I think there has been a lot of issues around uh, being included being valued so I think those guys that initially wanted to stay working from home saw it as you know more productive I don't have the commute I can save on costs switch that sort of 12 18 months later they feel lonely they feel left out they feel that they haven't progressed as much as maybe some others have in the company can't necessarily afford to heat their house anymore exactly (laughs) that was coincidental yeah um but yeah, I think we are, are sort of seeing a switch. So I think we've got like a nice hybrid at the moment where people want flexibility. You know, they understand it is a job and it's down to the employer. But I think there is a nice balance now between employer and uh, employee on finding that balance. And I mean, nine times out of ten, it just has to be a grown-up conversation around. You know, what's your, you know, finding out about the person finding out about what you know what their personal situation is and making sure that there is that balance but there is an onus from the candidate now whereas go back five years ago nine till five in the office it wouldn't even be a conversation in an interview um salaries i've mentioned about you know the premium of you know people wanting to reach out for those london salaries uh you know remotely uh, across the UK, starting to see that lessen off a little bit. So the market market starting to dictate, um, you know, what those salaries should be. But there has been an increase. And I think you know it's it's as fast as you want to scale. At the end of the day, if you want good people who are experienced into your business, you will have to go out there and probably pay a little bit more than than what you than what you would initially mm. think. And in terms of salaries, obviously inflation is something that we hear a lot about at the yeah. moment. So, so people are thinking about that. But equally, I uh, depressingly read quite a lot about recession yes. on, on the horizon. So have you? although there has been a lot of uh, salary inflation, are you seeing that slowing down now? Are you seeing um, businesses who are a bit more wary of being able to give people 20%? Rises if they swap jobs. I I think it's twofold, really. So obviously, we're talking about employer brand here from a perspective of attracting new talent. But there's a huge play at the moment around retention. So it's making sure you know the guys that you've got working for you at the moment are actually happy uh, and actually feel valued as well. So it's, I would say, you know, across the whole, there's been an increase. I don't think that's going to slow down. I think, you know, as you attract more talent into the business, you've got to make sure that your internal pay structure reflects that. You can't have one person, you know, being paid compensation for a set of deliverables that somebody's being paid, you know, 20%, 30% less for that's already there. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting time for, you know, for businesses setting up. They've just got to make sure that there's that transparency. Uh, I think that's going to sort of flit in or flick into my last point of you know respect um responsibility so we've got a huge um influx of candidates that are coming into the tech sector that would be classed as gen z um 
I'm not really sure on the dates around which generation <laughs> ends and which generation starts. I'm a lot younger than me, is, is yeah. all I know. I've, I think I'm, uh, yeah, I'm probably in your boat there, Ben. <laughs> um, but there is, you know, with this new influx of, of candidates that, that are, you know, interested around world affairs, you know, have the state of the economy. It's not just the deliverables that they're going to be paid for. It's about the impact, you know, whether that's carbon footprint, for example. You know, we're working with a number of of businesses that, that are promoting that as well. Um, but I think when I've had candidates of a younger generation coming through and working with clients, they're a lot more interested around what the clients are doing, mm-hmm. what what benefits come into the business, what benefits come into the role. But the the feedback tends to be they, they want transparency from that business. They want transparency from that leader. So I think, you know, it's much more around rather than just having the employer-employee relationship, you know, you've really got to get people to buy into you as a person. Um, you know, what you stand for, what your values are, whether you're a family person, whether you're in, you know, inclusive as a person. And I think you can sort of, if you can marry that up with, you know, the the salary, the compensation side of things, I think you're probably onto a good thing. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of the uh, standard things that you used to do around this is your salary, these are your benefits, on a Friday we play ping pong, all that type of yeah. stuff is, is, is the bare minimum now, that's the basics. Don't get me wrong, some people still love that. <laughs> um, yeah, why not? But, but, but then it's that more nuance around... This is how we operate as a business. This is how we operate as a team. This is the uh, the impact we're having in the world, yeah. which is is the added bit which makes recruitment possible. Really. Yeah, and it, you know, it's I think it's flipping it on its head from the client thinking we've got a great company, people should want to join our company, to the client putting themselves in the candidate shoes, thinking they're they're a great client there's another five great clients out there mm. how are we going to be different what are we going to do you know and that's about tapping into the employee psyche there what's going to make them tick um and you know what's going to make your employer brand stand out against everyone else's and i think you know if you can put a personal touch and really bring the human nature to you know whether it's a job or whether it's a company you're really going to engage with a new type of candidate and how are businesses showcasing that brand like so lots of businesses have an about us join us page on their website yeah but are there other things that people are doing are there video campaigns are there events that people can see to engage how if you were going out and doing a big campaign to showcase someone's employer brand how do you go about doing that? I think, uh, there's various methods i, th- I think you, you, i think what works quite well especially within the top uh, startup scale up model is having that consistency across you know whether your website an app your socials but then making sure that it's not just cold so it's not just you know uh, a landing page for example um see more and more companies engage with you know, video video adverts you know even making sure that the they can arrange a call with somebody via a, a video call rather than just you know old school phone call. Um, I think if you can keep that consistency and keep that you know brand message across those platforms, marry that in with some networking events and maybe you know like a hiring day for the company, especially if you're new to the city, get in, get involved with some of the the tech festivals and the tech community but also maybe doing your own sort of hiring day tap it into you know two or three recruitment agencies to help you with that to make sure that you've got the candidates or the right sorts of candidates coming in on the front end you can really showcase your brand differently from what a lot of the businesses are doing already yeah um but yeah i I would just make you know just maintain that consistency in terms of whatever you want to do or however you want to engage with the market, it's just making sure that that message is consistent for the candidate. And something we've certainly seen work as a business is, and it's sort of obvious if you think about it in marketing terms, but it is that piece of using your network. So um, team members who are happy to go out and shout about recruiting and shout about what the, the we are growing yeah. is much more compelling than me as the boss saying we're a great place to work because obviously I'm not going to say it's terrible to work here. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I've seen good and bad. Um, <laughs> you know, it, often when you get 
people internally need to speak about a business there's an element of gun to your head in there <laughs> um, so you have to be careful with some of those videos but I, th I think you know like I mentioned about around you know the, the new generation of candidates come into the market you know, these guys research everything you know they they were born on their phones so any sort of client or any role that they're going to go for um, the, you know they're going to do their homework so it's just making sure that you know if you've got a testimonial page or if you've got case studies or um, you know if you've got a, a sort of trip advisor glass um, door type glass door type um, page where you know people can leave recommendations um, they want to see the good and the bad they don't want to see just five comment saying you know this this uh company is you know the best they, they want to see you know, potential what's gone wrong but they want to see that because they want to see you know how you've turned a situation around or how you've dealt with a difficult customer or whatever the scenario might be but yeah i would just make sure that you know if you are given those case studies give an honest reflection of the client or you know of who you are it's it, again it goes back to that representation what you're about and that transparency as well to build that that message of transparency to the candidate yeah and i think that that transparency and honesty piece is is really really important because as a business who are who is hiring at times um you know what your culture is and you don't no matter how sometimes desperate you are to get people in, yeah. what you should never do is hire someone who doesn't fit in that culture because ultimately they're not going to be happy, they're not going to perform, you're not going to be happy and it's this sort of really understanding what that culture is, what that employer brand is, then you can go out and you can find the right people the first time because to touch back on your point about retention, yeah, it's incredibly expensive and time-consuming to hire. So yeah. you want to make sure you're getting the right people. And I guess that's some of the importance of employer branding, isn't it? Of Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, there, there are going to be times where potentially the wrong people come into the business. But, yeah, I think, you know, hit the nail on the head there. It's much more around now making sure that, you know, I guess culture is, is a term that's used daily um, within every single business in the UK globally as well um, your culture is essentially what you are so it's just making sure that I guess leaders or hiring managers are reflecting what the values are or you know internally as well mm -hmm. as externally and approaching new candidates cool yeah and um, so final question from me um, one of the challenges I think we have in um, the tech community right across the UK is uh, diversity and inclusion and, yeah. and how we make sure that we have um, as a whole a sector that is representative of, of the UK yeah. um, but also as businesses that we can find the very best talent and reach out to the very best talent and make sure that they feel like it's a job for them as well. Yes. So is that something that you can do through employer branding and is that something you've seen done anywhere? Um, yeah, I, I would say the majority of the clients that we work with, it's one of the first conversations that, that comes up when we engage in terms of hiring strategies or whatever role that we, we may be helping them uh, to recruit for, which is a nice change from probably 10 years ago where you know, it crop up in maybe one in five calls, um, but I think I think naturally the world has changed for, for the better, um, and I think a lot of businesses are now putting an onus on to make sure that you know they themselves as business leaders might be inclusive, but do does the company represent yeah. inclusivity as well? If you're actually active and trying to engage with the community, um, uh, sorry engage with the tech network I think you have more control of finding diversity and inclusivity rather than your passive and waiting for it to happen but yeah just to reiterate you know there's some great networks um, that we work within um, and we're advocates of um, but yeah you know it's I'd say you know it's a mixture between you know working closely with your networks having good relationships there but yeah, just making sure that, that that is a conversation at the forefront of your mind when yeah. when you're hiring. And there are there's a whole um, 
list of different networks that we've worked with across the UK, which um, I'm sure we can drop into the uh, frequently asked questions that we'll be sending out afterwards because it's more than happy to share this knowledge. Um, Scott, thank you so much for that. No problem, really thanks helpful. for having me. Um, we'll be sure to share your details as well and I'm sure there'll be people uh, who want to get in touch and have conversations which will hopefully be helpful. Yeah, um, and yeah, just on the point, you know, even if it's, what if, in terms of anything to do with, with recruitment, I think the nice part of, nicest part of my job is, is speaking to clients. Um, you know, it's, it's a tricky sector at times, but yeah, if there is anybody listening that, you know, wants a bit of off-the-cuff advice or, you know, just to see how the land lines, uh, lies, yeah, feel free to get in touch. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you.